Don John Metal does not you. support aggressive and violent sex. Do metal, but it does. No, no, it's Zach Flint. Are you there, man? Oh my God! Don John Metal. I'm gonna be Judge Metal. Yeah. 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 Welcome back, Don John Metal. Welcome back to Non-Judge Metal. Uh, I'm Carl Guthrie. We got Nick, Leo, and Mad Dog James. Fuck, I forgot. McGruff. McGruff. Sorry. And uh, yeah, welcome back. Yeah. I'll tell Metal you the reason why McGruff is single. Episode. Okay. Bring because Metal is my mistress, man. Like I've tried to date for many years, and I think it's that it's a generational thing. I don't think it's a woman thing. Definitely, generation has a. But you, but huh? you still different holes is not a has. Like a woman has like. I, I, I don't even care about the holes that metal has. You know, like like man, like we can get through life without sexual or intimate interaction. Well, absolutely. Like, and I can find that if I really well, need you're to. Well, you I'm, I'm, I'm a virile man in my 30s. But women can't do the same. Well, I don't care if they can or not. But I'm talking about me, per, me prospectively, how I feel Thank about you. dating now. Yeah. Is uh like man, metal's been there for me way more. Mm-hmm. I go to shows, I have a good time. I'm getting picked up by men and women alike. I'm looking at these girls, man, yep. and some of like the thickest girls that wouldn't go out dressed in some of the things they would. They feel comfortable to dress how they want at a metal show. And the uh, the, the the women there are beautiful. They're <laughs> cool. They are. They're Everyone fucking out. down to fucking earth, man. It's a good time. Dude, but I go them. out in the world and I try to. I know, dude. Mm-hmm. I think that these girls, the girls that would stand there and want to snuggle up. With me at a metal show, you know, when it gets cold. Snuggle. Yeah. Well, not snuggle up, but I'm saying, like, dude, I'm standing at the... All right, so I'm at the last festival uh, yeah. I'm at, and uh-huh. I'm standing there, and, like, you know, like, like I feel that tinge of being alone, but at the same time, like, I, I'm honest to God, I don't care, because I'm so sick of having to share my life with someone to the point where it doesn't feel like I'm sharing it, but I'm just giving it away to them for no reason. Tell me. But yeah. I'm standing there at that show, and I'm watching them. Very I'm watching, the, I'm watching people, man, and the ones that get along, those are the girls that are, like... They're there because they want to be... The girls and guys. And whoever you are, you're there with your partner. And you're standing there in the crowd. And you got your arms wrapped around each other during a slow song, during a heavy band set. And you're enjoying that moment together. And you're sharing that moment together. And I thought about it, and I've never had someone in my life that was like that. I think my ex-wife had moments where we could have that together, but overall... Like, we weren't totally 100% on spot with music, so like that, you know, it wasn't necessarily a... I say, no, just just go to a show and find some shit, find a track, and be like, hey, you want to, you know, hang out for the show? Right. Like, oh, yeah, I've done it, man. Like, you know, okay, what, good. what I mean? Like, going to a show and finding a girl to hang out with, finding a lady to hang out with, man, that's it's really no problem. Like, like I, it's not okay. like I lack the confidence to talk to people, it's just, man, at this, in my Making age... Sure. Like, when I'm at a show or I'm hanging out or I'm wanting to... Like, I, I, I think that from now on i got to have someone who's into the same... Not not the same stuff I am, because that's almost impossible. Without a doubt. But to have someone who's at least appreciative or understands the music I listen to, right. man. <laughs> I think I've come to find out that I don't want to be with a chick that likes metal at all. Because Whoa. then, Whoa. I, no, and, Whoa. and it, it's, hey, it's no, good, hey, here at non judgmental, we don't. Ca- I'm just playing. It's a good Go ahead. reasoning. It's a good reasoning behind. If you date a metal chick, that the pot? or a chick that likes listening to metal, then, then I, I take the chance of being stuck listening to bad metal. And I, I oh wait, what? Say that again. I don't want to be listening to bad metal. All right, would you rather listen You don't to want them to be metal? like, you got to, man. You There's just got to listen to this right like, here. Well, here it no. is, blood on the dance floor, babe. No. Look, and you're like... Bad metal or good Sarah McLaughlin? Right hand, bad metal. Left hand, good Sarah McLaughlin. I mean, I would, take the, I would take the bad metal any day. Okay. But it's because I'm not afraid of it. But yeah, but once again, the terms bad metal well, and Sarah just, Glo- good Sarah well, McLaughlin are both just being a non judge metal. It's apples to oranges, right? Apples to oranges. And it's subjective to opinion. No, And it's subjective to opinion, man. I, I see it's like Brayburn versus Golden Delicious. I just don't want them judging my metal being like flavors. your metal's too heavy. Like, if they just hate metal in general, then, you know, it's cool. I'm going to listen to what I'm going to listen to. Fuck you anyway. I'm a man who lives with my ex-girlfriend. As friends, not in a very, not in one of those, like, negative, weird, creepy situations. Way. No, no, no. It doesn't at all. We're friends. Like, we were good friends, and then we dated, and then we just, like, it didn't click. You know, so now we're dating. Uh, so now we're we're just living together without dating. Like it's it's not a negative thing. Like we're roommates. It's good. It's not a bad. I don't. But yeah, I mean, like I, even she knows, man. She's respective. Like, dude, when I sit in the living room, dude. Before. When I sit in the living room, uh, yeah. man, I've been doing it for a while. It's no problem. Yeah, I know what you mean. When I pound down the fucking metal in the living room, she doesn't say anything because she knows. 
she doesn't like that stuff, but she knows she's she understands that right. I love it. It's a passion of mine. I work hard. I, I I bust my ass like you know sixteen to eighteen hours a day at two different jobs, and those jobs right. benefit me you, on the ability to just jam out to some right. of the goodest. Just are you shit down on a life. big stereo? Or are you just doing it on your, on your, on your phone? Dude, I do it on the headset. I do it in the car. I get home at night, man, and I got an hour, yeah. and I say, you know what? I want to play some Battlefield One and shoot some people, and I play on the Xbox, <laughs> yes, and, and you know, I'm oh, doing a tray you slash Twitch. Yeah. I get on there and I play the metal in the background while I play. Like I, 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 dude, metal is my life. It's, can, it's all over the place. Can you bang your girl to the metal? Will she, will she be? Doing I don't like that? to bang the metal. I do. No, Are no, you that, serious? Yeah, dude. I don't know for some reason. No, 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 no. no. Oh. It, it's fine, and I'm not judging you guys I, for it. That's no, fine. it doesn't have to be your favorite. It just has to be understood. You got to be able. You don't have to. Look, I'm, I'm going to say it because this is drunk soda, and I've had some drinks. But quite personally, when it comes to intimacy with a woman, man, I kind of like to focus on her and not what's going on around. Oh yeah, well she gets focused yeah. on plenty. Like the man, like yeah, the no, 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 dude. But I, but I mean, I got like beat. I almost am at the like the, the mid level in my brain of like weaponized autism. So I well, got really is. focused like, on I just, something. When you're you know? trying to give them like some angry dick at 180 beats per minute, like I feel like it's important to just have a motivating drive behind you, and you know, she's getting attention. Trust and believe. My girl hates metal, but she'll let me do it now. My non judge metal does do not it. support aggressive and violent sex due to metal, but it does support no, no, it's sex not, it's, with metal. Yeah, sex with metal. I am not thing. saying sex with metal is bad by no means, man. I'm just saying with me personally, how I am right. well, that's when it comes to intimacy. Well, that's understood. We all understand that. Yeah, it's that. just not my thing. But uh, you do, as soon no as problem. it's over, man, I want to light a cigarette and uh, and, and have, a, have a brew and pound the fucking metal. Right now. I want to pound it well, as hard as I just did. That was basically very revealing. Yeah, but basically what you need to understand is you're going to please her by what you like and then focus on that because that's a natural starting point. So, you know, with metal, you can do that. I, I noticed with my wife, she goes everywhere. She loves Drunk metal. I have no Drunk problem. No problem with I've her seen it. at all when it comes to listening to metal or playing my music. She understands it. Well, you should, she enjoys it. You should watch. She likes. Yeah. You got married? I'm married. Well, congratulations, man. Yes, sir. I just yeah. found that out mid-episode. That's how <laughs> right. we haven't well, seen yeah. each other. That's, oh, yeah. That's well, amazing. don't give me too much credit. That's a round of applause. Don't give me too much credit. No, you, you guys join in. Round of applause did not, that, dude, because I did not know. That's I so did cool. not do the yard today. Oh, I'm so glad. It, that point's been removed. I'm glad you didn't do the yard today. I'm glad you, you know did. What? That's a cool wife to let you come here. Well, she knows That's I'll get honestly, on it. She knows her man's going to take care of it. Pretty business. metal. Yeah. Because he's my little honey badger. And That's right. She fucking... She, she kills it. Yeah, yeah, man. She loves metal. She went with me to uh, Tennessee to see a perfect circle, which, you know, is not I, metal. But I she, saw him in May. Yeah, we did too. I'm May. Did, where'd yep. you go? Uh, we went out to Tennessee. I went to the Rebellion Fest. Well, um, there's a couple other uh, Got to see metal Matt shows that was uh, I've been to. I actually, went, when we were uh, having shows, she would come out and fucking rock out like little blonde chick. And, when you uh, were having shows with who? Little sexy thing, huh? When you were having shows with who? Oh, uh, I used to play with this uh, local punk band called uh, oh, right, After right. Action Review. Yeah, like she and she would come out yeah. and out to you. Yeah, she went to Meshuggah with me. That, uh, that down to Charlotte. A, this sounds like a Cinderella she, story in its dude, own way. Dude, she it? is a beast. Like she's <laughs> she's a I don't know I, I don't know how to describe her. So her. so hold on amazing. hold on real quick Where before my wife is a little hold on before you before he answers that I gotta ask this so she's the kind of girl that during a a chill song at a metal show you guys could she wants to do that I don't and like yeah but you could would you do hit car. for her well yeah of course that's I mean, what well, I that's, might that's what I might break my infinite what, singleness for well, well with so marriage, congrats that you have one of those right that, well that, I, I am I am honestly happy for you well I, I'm happy for myself too uh, with, with marriage it's it's a lot of give and little take you hear that like, ladies you missed out you, on you do Guthrie. for your spouse and then you know, they do for you. Like, it's a mutual thing. Like, you submit to one another. It's not so much a sexual thing. It's like, I submit my love to you. Like, what could I do for you? Like, you know, a wife comes home. She wants her foot rubbed. No questions asked. I don't feel like doing it. But I know that's going to make her your feel better. Your purpose is to enhance your life and she yours. Right. I, I'm supposed to protect her and to love her and to do what I can to honor our, our marriage. And... I she used think, to do I the same I for me. Missed, I, I, I'm sorry. There's I no expectations. This info on There's you. no expectations. Like that. That's the biggest killer. When you expect something from somebody that you know is eventually not going to do it, or well, you yeah. just you take them for granted, or and then when they like don't change. do it, then you're pissed off. Like Man. it's so childish. We've just segued into 
marriage counseling. Metal yeah. and love. Dude, metal, metal marriage counseling. Metal and dating. It, it really does. It connects to everything, man. Like, because that's what I'm saying. Like, to me, you know, and I'm not saying it's bad for anyone else. I'm cho- I'm choosing my own path. Like, you know, when I wake up in the morning, ultimately, I'm the center of my own universe. And for me, yep. being single is what works because I just haven't I had that days. experience. Like, dude, and I was those a guy who sang in bands who would meet girls at shows that I would hang out with and date. And, you there know, you it'd go. go well, and it'd go bad, and it'd go well, and it'd go mm-hmm. bad. And, you know, I mean, there, so, I mean, it's not like I, I, I've just always been against that type of, but uh, I've never found someone that's been on par with me as far as that. Like, well, dude, I've never dated a girl. I've never dated a girl that would be like, oh, man, with sugar plan. Yeah. Like, you know, like, dude, I have two Kill Whitney Dead tickets. I'm going to give one to my friend. Because he loves them, and he knows about them. And I'm going to tell you this right now, like, I don't know a single uh, uh, significant partner option in my life that would honestly, like, say, hey, I'd like to go see Kill Whitney Dead with you maybe on a date. It definitely is an acquired taste. Oh, it's an acquired taste, man. Totally. But, you know, I would like that if I could find someone. But honestly, man, metal's become my mistress, dude. Metal doesn't fuss at me. It don't tell me to do things. It understands when I work an 18-hour day. It says, no, 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 no. You worked a hard day. You don't have to listen to Chimera. You don't have to listen to Death Metal right now. Yeah, I mean, I can, but I can do that at work when I'm riding around, man. I'm riding around on Resurrection. I'm riding around on, on the flame, dude. I'm pounding down. But when I get home, I can listen to something my faith the more, something to chill out to, man. I can I can <laughs> enjoy a cigarette on the couch and a beer and a <laughs> yes. shot, and I can lay back and I can go to sleep. Metal soothes me to sleep. I enjoy some as it time, rages like, right me up in the day, bed. man. So I realize, yeah. honest to God, James McGruff, metal's his mistress. You're like the metal iced tea right now, sir. Yeah, man. I just I want you to understand like, this. I just yeah. like like I I got to look at it from a from Perspective as body count blowing up. A body count is blowing up. But I gotta, I gotta look at women and, and dating in my life as a perspective. Honestly, for the first time in my life, I've been, you know, always trying to be there for someone. I am too good for anyone mm. because and I want to take care of myself. And there you go. No, 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 not in that way. I don't think I'm too good for for anyone. Like I'm above them, but I'm saying I need to fix myself. And if I continue to think that 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 I'm not ready to be with them because we ain't on the same level, then I think that when I get to that same level, man, I can start looking at people like people again. Because right now I look at people like they just want something out of you, like they may like you personally, like 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 in a relationship, a man or woman may like the opposite partner personally. But they still may be going, hey, the finances, hey, you know, what their living situation, you know, do they got a nice car? They may be looking at the outer outer shell. Without putting into what what really makes you you, and until I feel comfortable with getting through that, dude, metal's all I need. I don't need someone else taking up half my time, dude, because then they're just taking away from metal, and that can't happen. Well, you always have time for metal, no. as long as as long as they're worthy. Not if you get some bitchy old screech owl. Well, that's why you don't keep them. Yeah, man. You know see, like, I got that problem. You know I got that don't problem keep them just where, because like, of you know, the, like. The, I want to be. I want to be good to people. I look at. I'm like, oh, you got problems. Let me. You gotta dig deep. You got to look at your lifestyle and the things that you love and appreciate, and find somebody who identifies with those things. And then once you guys talk about it, understand it, and you you know lead it, she'll she'll love it, and she'll just keep giving you more. So. Oh my God, Jesus Christ, Carl Guthrie. When's your self help book coming out? (laughs) It's not. This is from experience. It's all. I know. Well, it's all biblically based. Just read the Bible every now and then. You'll you'll see some scriptures in there that really speak to how to treat a woman, especially your wife, your spouse, like. And then in those, I don't know, man. To me, all that trials, just came natural, fine. man. Like it's just, well, yeah. It's to me, it's too. just being nice. You, you can't. Just, I just don't understand why people in this generation aren't nice anymore. Like, like let's culture? take, let's take, let's it's take, just culture. Well, well, yeah, I mean, I know it's culture, well, it gets but attention like attention for being nice. I, I, that's what I'm saying. It used to. Remember, remember when you used to, if you held the door for someone, someone was uh, amazed by it. Like they were so, or not I mean, amazed by it. That's now nice. they're amazed by it. They used to be. It used to be the regular. That's so that's now. I'm not talking about for a man or woman or anyone. Just phone, being kind just to anybody. To it. Anybody to being kind to anybody at this point has almost seemed like it's out of the normal. 
Well, now we're going into a whole it. different world with culture Maybe and politics. Maybe we are going into a whole different world. But, I mean, yeah. no, no, it's really not. Because, like I said, man, when every time I go to a metal show, Everything. I'm in the same room. All right. So, all right, I, I go to the street each day. I go out on my job. I deal with the public. I'm a public servant. I'm out there every day. I'm dealing with you people. You look sexy the other day, by the way. Uh, yeah. Do I made no Do not that. mention what I do, but I, I, I do look yeah. great in my uniform. But Slow. I go out. And I, and, you know, and I bust my ass, I'm a public servant, and I'm a customer service rep, and I'm right there in the public face, and nobody's polite, nobody's kind. Why did you get but you go to a metal show. You go to a metal show, man, and you're in a room with a thousand or more strangers, and they are the first right. ones. Right, I know what you're saying. To, like, you know, like you could be having a conversation with your friend. Yeah, yeah, but I saw this band, blah, 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 X this year. And some guy kicks in behind you, oh, man, I was at that tour. And next thing you know, you're in a heated conversation with a good a guy you didn't know behind you, and you got a ton in common, well, or you don't have anything in common, but you're getting along, because it doesn't matter at that point how you stated. feel about people, how you feel about your political affiliations, religion, no matter what, you got something in common, and I think that if the world could find that common ground, and just be non-judgmental about everything, right. and just go, hey. Just keep an open mind. Okay. Absolutely, that you know that what? you could you could that, that people could find just like a, 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 a just something inside them to help them, you know, get through the day. That's True. what does it for me, man. Absolutely, dude. It's it's basically like it's universal. Like everybody wants good mulch, and when you lay your mulch, you know it might come from a company, but it's doing the trick that you want it to do. It's mulch. When you listen to metal, you're just like it's doing for you what it needs to do, and there you go. It's non non-binary it's it's explosive it's for you metal and the we'll, mulch that grows the love of the earth man and, and it can be <laughs> binary Listen, it can be binary yeah, yeah. turning out of the binary metal man. numbers crowds thousand people right it's awesome right How i'm not wearing my wig right i now. was in a yeah. hundred thousand crowd people man and i've never felt safer i what go out on the street every day and i deal with maybe okay you know, a hundred people, and, a lot of people and I feel out for sometimes I feel intimidated. or I feel like I got to be on my guard, but I go when I'm standing in a crowd for a hundred people. Dude, I bust, I bust my head. I got blood, and these are the first ones checking on me, strangers who I've never met in my life. Man, they're the first ones picking me up. You know, telling me that's badass, man. Giving me a hug, a stranger, dude. Like, I'm trying yeah. to create stories about what exactly it was. Mud Vane, 2001, 2002. Are you talking about the time when I hung out about, and smoked a blunt with him? Nothing but Excuse the me. entire, the entire show. It's like nonstop. I'm trying to explain it. I know Leo was there with me, but like, without a doubt, almost uh, excruciating would be the the topic because you never got comfortably. Like set in one place because it seemed like even when the song stops, you're still getting ready for the next next song to, to, to kick in, and by that time, it's already started again. That's not a mosh pit. Everybody is pushing everything, just trying to get where they're at because there's not enough space in there. So when the numbers increase too much, I guess that's the reason for the fire code, the fire marshal and shit. Well, yeah, well, there, there's, yeah, there's got to be a safety issue in there, man. When I saw American Head Charge, you brought them up earlier. I think we were talking outside of when we were recording. And uh, when I saw them in Ozfest, man, when I saw American Head Charge, they come out firing shotguns on stage, man, and the fire marshals on the side of the stage afterward, like foot tapping, arm straws, like what, what are you doing? We gotta shut this shit down. If you do, you can't do that. You can't fire shotguns in the sky. Yeah. Fucking brutal! It was so. I mean, but it, but that's what made it fun, man. Right. Those guys were willing to go out there and take a risk. Like I remember, some guy bitch. He was like, they could have ruined the whole show. I was like, dude, they weren't gonna shut down all the Ozfest, all the Ozfest for this one band. They would have kicked them off stage after two or three songs. Excuse me. There was a lot of backlash from ASP or on ASP when he was telling them, Eddie Hermeta. He was telling the fans, like, look. There's only about 25 security guards here. There's been thousands of you guys. Come up on stage. Fuck this place. Like, let's fucking tear it up and shit. And I'm like, oh, man. The That's metal's amazing. so heavy. It is, but, like, people can get fucking hurt. Can we stop playing? They can I get I don't hurt. want anybody to get hurt. I want my daughter to be going to a show like that or something like that. And then I'm getting hurt because of some shit. Collapsing. Jumping off. Like, I don't... I don't know. I shouldn't worry. I, shouldn't I don't know. Like I, you you shouldn't, man, because of the uh, the the statistics on it. If you if you really think about it, how many people get hurt at those situations right. that don't? 
How many times have you ever fell at a metal show where you got knocked down or been near the mosh pit? Had my face knocked out. Yeah. Systematic. But did somebody pick you up? Nope. What he happened? Died, he rolled out. I went to the fucking bathroom. And tried Nobody to else before. helped you. Well, what, I'm saying like they were. Everybody was around. But like that was the first band, first note of the first fucking band. And this dude, what? Dude, this comes Nick, all the way back. I'll be honest. You got a bad. You got a bad situation. You, the just, you time, got like, the anomaly. But God Smack finished it. Cold played. Stain played. Like it was a big. Oh, I know. I was there, dude. I was there, and I love that show. I just wish, I wish, and I say this as non-judgmental as possible, that I hadn't watched Pantera, Soulfly, and Morbid Angel and Nothing Face four days beforehand. Because I think that, because if you see that show and then you see the next one, you're kind of like, I understand why this is good, but God, I kind of wish I was watching Pantera again. What if like, it was seven days past? That make any oh, difference? it would take at least a 30 to 60 day period Jeez. for the rub of the Kings of Metal. Dude, I, I'm telling you, I was 16, 15 years old. My mom dropped me off. Louisville, Kentucky, dude. Which is, you know, you, you don't know where we are by listening to us, but 10 hour drive from where we're at. I mean, it was a lengthy, lengthy drive. The Angry Gordon was 16 and had never been to a concert. And his parents were that kind of like, you know, rough and tough type, even though they did what the fuck they wanted. They were, hey, you can't go do anything fun just right. because, you know, that you know we're, we're dicks about it because we're adults, you know. I'm we sure every, every one of us understands in, in a way. Gordon and uh, me uh, head to the Pantera. I buy him tickets as a surprise. We get there. I mean, this is the craziest show I've ever seen. But even then, like at that time, man, like people were, like as a kid, you know, partied up a little bit. You know, I might have a few drinks now and then, but. Hey, like, I was tearing it up. Oh, come on. At 16, tearing it up at the Pantera show. First time I've ever been to a concert like this big. Now, I've been to big concerts before, but this is me in the front row. And they're pouring liquor in people's faces, man. And we're getting knocked down every other time for the mosh pit. And people are picking us up. Nobody's angry at all. And that's what taught the metal festival because I remember going to the next one because I went to that Godsmack show and I got I got knocked down trying to help a handicapped kid and uh, when I got knocked down man next thing I know there's this big tree trunk of an arm boot just picking me up pulling me up the ground. Tell you what, gentlemen, what does it for me as far as lyrically, the way it's presented? Yeah, is Hate Breeds album Perseverance. Oh, oh. dude, uh, oh, the early record. I saw them when they toured for that. It's like 2002. Oh, I saw them when they toured for that man. That right is before far. it came out, they were playing like three or four songs off of it. Yeah, yeah. In the summer of 2001, I saw them. Man, honestly, to this day, one of the biggest mosh pits I've ever seen. Hate Breeds. Yeah, yeah pretty, you've, been to, you've been to Pantera. You've seen that side. Pantera like, wasn't a massive pit. It was like big pits all right. over the crowd. But Pantera, man, that groove metal sound, and dude, it's like going to a big party. I mean, they pull up the liquor cart on stage with cups of beer, and they right. chuck them out to the crowd. Yep. And they have a good time, man, and they chug whiskey while they play, and they smoke yeah. joints. They have a great fucking time. But they're small pits in really certain parts. But there's not... Here's a Pantera story for you non-judgmental listeners. When I was watching them at 16 years old, this, this taught me how much metal means to people. <clears throat> And how good time at a metal show is almost worth that grind at work every week that we all go through where we try to justify our earnings. This was that moment for me, watching a guy and his buddy arm in arm smoke a joint together. At 16 years old, I'm watching this Pantera, man. And the mosh, kick, uh, mosh pit kicks up. Five minutes alone. That's on. Joint gets pumped out of his hand into the fucking pit. He takes his fucking necklace off his neck and he gives it to his buddy. And he was like, I'll be right back, dude. And this dude dies in the pit, fucking arm swinging. And he disappears Beautiful. into this massive crowd, me and Gordon, me and Angry, just smacking each other. Oh my God, look at this. Fucking hilarious. Have you ever seen this shit? A few seconds later, here he comes emerging. The range Holding the, the joint in his hand, man. The roach, dude, hits he it. He found it in the middle of the Passes battle. Passes it to his bud and he goes, I got it, bro. Like, Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. He was, my he was favorite in, moments he found in my that life. In full combat mood. My favorite moments in my life, besides like, you know, important moments like 
weddings and birth of children and things of that nature. First golden shower, right. Yeah, exactly. You know, like the oh, first well, time. I bring that up, man. Well, I'm just talking about, you know, I, the, the first time. It's cheesy, I had to. I remember getting that moment where I, I still hadn't met anybody famous. I was 17 years old. Like, you know, you get to, like, maybe see him walking by outside the show. And at 17 years old in Huntington, West Virginia, with a friend of mine, uh, I'll just call him Bell. He uh, was gracious enough to drive me up there for a free ticket after my original plans got canceled. I got a chance to get up there to see Pantera in Huntington with Slayer at a show oh, where Lord. Terry King played fucking hostile on stage next to Dimebag Daryl. Like, a moment I'll never forget in my life. That's Dude, a high fucking five. A. I, why you guys are not applauding, I'm not understanding. Dude, no, no. I'm I'll high five everybody on that. Dude, Dude Will, yes, moment. Applause. It was a moment. It was a hey, moment. Gentlemen, three, two, one, please applause. Yeah, please. Thank you. I got to see that. That's how important Man. it is. Okay, can you imagine is, how they felt playing it? It's middle history. Oh, absolutely. Middle history. So, no, that's... He uh he throws his microphone in the crowd. Uh, mm -hmm. He grabs the secondary mic off stage, and he's like, "Fucking sing it with me, man!" And he throws it out there. And uh, dude, I remember just going, a seventeen-year-old, two hundred and ten-pound me. You know, probably the strongest and healthiest I've ever been in my life. I'm gonna take a shot for this. Did you get the mic? That's what I'm asking. Now. Who grabbed the mic? I did. He grabs the oh thing. My God. Sure. Dude, I give me the details. I swear it on my goddamn listeners, listeners, I swear it on my goddamn name, dude. Do it. Do I it. swear it. And um, tell the fucking story, man. This is a beautiful thing. It might not see significant to the other person, but. Oh, but it is. The mic yes, goes in the crowd, dude, and everybody's like. You know, there's a sea of people. Yeah, yeah, I'd be too. You know. And Phil's, Phil's up there, man, in the second verse, fucking rocking out, man. Walking around the stage, you know, just fucking kicking it, dude. Dimebag's fucking railing. Rex Brown's up there, man, just bam, 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 on the bass, dude. Pound. <clears throat> Benny's in the back, just that, uh -huh. that, that, that drum sound that no one else besides Benny Paul produces. And, and, and my friend, Bell, to this day, I love him. Mm -hmm. He grabs me and he just pushes oh, me up on top of the crowd. Just drop. right on top of people, man. And I see it, dude, and I get up there and I grab it. Mike and for King. maybe ten seconds of my life, I got Phil Anselmo's mic in my mouth. The one he's been using all show. Sexual. And I suck in. I oh, suck dude. in so I can scream it with him because he gets to the chorus and he was like, he's like, sing it with me, man. And he gets to the chorus and I'm like, <sighs> and I feel the fucking spit. And just moisture of his microphone just in my mouth. I'm, I'm not on. even mad that I just sucked in another man's saliva. Fuck yes. Honest to goodness, dude. And I'm right back, walk. I'm fucking singing it with him, dude. I'm I'm literally half hanging up on a crowd full of people, dude. People are trying to grab it on my hands. I'm elbowing chicks, dudes, anyone I can. This is the most important moment of my life because I am singing on Phil Anselmo's microphone. Singing walk on a crowd, and I'm just fucking brutal, dude. And then when I sat down, uh, when they put me down, man, when he drug it back out of the crowd, and they started getting to the fucking bar, nah, 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 and fucking Dimebag's playing the lead, dude, and they're back to the song, and the mic's out of the crowd, and it's back to the regular show again. You know, uh, like Bell pulls me down, he's like, that, he's fucking slapping me on the back, dude. He's like giving me the horns, the horns. Oof. So Which we need we need to think a whole episode on the fucking horns, man. Well, duh. Everything from where it started, how important it is, and why Gene Simmons sucks for trying to steal and it. And how we have incorporated but that in our lives. How course. we have incorporated it in our lives, dude. I give the horns for everything. Yeah. But regardless, my friend gives me the horns and a girl next to me. No shit to this day. Hottest little metal chick I ever known. She turns around and she just grabs me by the face. <laughs> Right on the lips, one big smacker, and she's like, "That was fucking great, dude," and just pushes. Great Nobody's job. mad that I stole that. That I stole that moment from them. That's the metal community. They're proud. They're fucking knowing how important this thing is to me, man. Like it's just, I'll never <laughs> to, till the day I die. That that will be one of. I, I vividly remember that moment of. 
I don't remember me walking the first goddamn time. Who fucking does? You know, but, uh, I mean, who fucking does, dude? I don't remember half the things in my life. My fucking virginity. Don't remember half the goddamn details about it. But singing on Phil Anselmo's mic, Huntington, West Virginia, 2001, I fucking remember it to the T, dude. I remember the black hair and fucking red-haired girl in front of me. Man, I sex. remember the dude with the buzz cut fucking looking in my face the whole time going, yeah! Wait, giving me the horns. Shit on I fire. I remember Phil on stage wearing his fucking Charlie Manson t-shirt with the fucking X drawn on his head. Roll Tide. I remember Dime Black bag with his fucking uh, Washburn nailing that fucking lead, dude. I remember fucking everything about it. Man, sex, That's how life. important that moment is to me. Day. Insane. Right. Oh my god! Non judgmental! I'm gonna be judgmental! Fuck Papa Roach! He stole my t shirt! Well, it's not metal, so technically. No! He stole my shirt! What, Papa Roach? Jacoby Shaddix! Which one's that? I do. Unless there's some kind of fucking mis fucking interpretation of events that doesn't make sense to me. Uh huh. The son of a bitch. You know. Did you pee on him? I mean, no, dude. All right, so I don't even remember what year it was because seeing them was so insignificant. Just make it up. It I better. ignored them at Rebellion this year because I just wanted to spit. But you know uh -huh. what? Like I'm older and I gotta be non-judgmental. I gotta be, and I'm trying to be. But the truth is, like they Did came to Salem, dude. They came to Salem with Alien Ant Farm and goddamn Snapcase, and you I didn't want to see any of it. And my, my a friend of mine come up to my house and he said, "Hey, yeah, we got we got six tickets to see Papa Roach, but they said we can only have them if we got six people. They and, were trying to fill the stadium well, since it only had like five thousand people in well, it. From what I was told, every male member coming to that audience stop, dude, had yeah, to I'm, wear makeup. Oh, you don't especially understand. lipstick. Oh, uh, listen to me. Did you do I listen went, to me, dude? I went, I all right. Touch me. Look, man. But I all right, dude. But we're kids." We're kids at that time, and if you guys had that taste, I'm not shitting on it, man. Papa Roach is good to somebody. I went to a Papa they Roach obviously concert. have good in They obviously have fans, and they just released a new album. They're still out there. It was they were headlining. Was not that a headlining, really? but they were on the big stage of that rebellion. But I'm not shitting on them personally. <laughs> Dude, let me talk, because I'm really mad about this, and I haven't was. I'm just going to tell this story one time, and if it's not true, I hope someone can fucking prove it to me it's not. Because it's so aggravating. Yeah, he stole, shirt. No, that's not he stole my shirt. Dude, he he might not have meant to, but he did. And I wasn't given an opportunity to even be like, hey, dude. Hey, Jacoby. I'm not really a fan of you. I came here because y'all needed people at the show when you're leaving my goddamn Cannibal <laughs> Corp shirt. He was a dick. I, dude, your hand a, no, a friend of mine showed up wearing it at the bar down the road that they had, were doing a meet and greet at before the show. And w they pulled up in a van at my house, man. I was sitting at the house playing Goldeneye on the Nintendo 64. I'm starting to get real fucking angry right now. I was now. sitting there playing Goldeneye on the Nintendo 64. Right, understood. I was happy. Fuck I didn't yes. want to leave. I was listening to Slayer. Do it. I was listening to Slayer. Do it again. The abyss. I didn't want to leave the house. And they said, we got to go to Papa Roach. He gave us six tickets, but he said, uh -huh. we got to have all six to go. I uh -oh. said, you know when you get to Will Call, they're not going to give a fuck. And they're going to give you the five tickets anyway. Just tell him your six friends park in the car. Six. No, you gotta go. What if you don't? And we don't get to go see Papa Roach. I was like, well, your life's not gonna be ruined. Mm -hmm. I was. I just didn't want to see him. But you know what, man? I'm a good guy. I there went with the friends. Plus, man, that little skinny goth chick was kind of hot. I'm not gonna lie. You know, like I, I was tired. 16, 17 years old, dude, and she was hot. Molt. So I, I, you know, I fell for that woman thing. That's why I'm single now and meddles my uh -oh. mistress because she doesn't ask me to do stupid goddamn things. So I go to this show to help my <laughs> friends, and we get the will call tickets. And my friend, Good while he's at the bar meeting Papa Roach, who offer him the free tickets, he's got my Cannibal Corpse butchered at birth shirt. Butchered at birth, man. Absolutely. With the mummies fucking tearing the fetus out of the womb. What a beautiful thing just to witness. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely Dude, not just even Not even horrendous. to mention the afterbirth. Dude. Old ladies would Oof. vomit at this shirt. Oof. It's like but I love to wear it as a 17-year-old asshole. I was like, I want to have so, a shirt that has a picture of a gunt on it. With here's the problem with that out. shirt, and here's after something that I haven't really mentioned too much until now because I'm embarrassed about it. Don't That's do the it. shirt I was wearing when I seen them. It had Corpse Grinder's fucking signature at the bottom. Mm. 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 Because he needed a shirt that day, and I said, it's the only thing clean. He said, please. I said, here, take it. But he was wearing it, and I'm at Papa Roach, 
and we're, we're in the he's in the front row and I'm in the front row because I'm trying to watch these assholes. And he starts waving it around and taking his shirt off because it's hot, like it's hot right now. But you know what? I'm leaving my Dillinger Escape Plan shirt on. Fuck yes. I'm not cool. taking it off and waving it around floppy titties in front of you guys. No. But he sure as hell did. No, he yeah. waves it around, and it comes out of his hand, and it lands halfway on stage. And here comes Jacoby Shaddix. He picks it up. Yep. He throws it to the side of the stage, and he continues on with the show. Sexual. And the show ends, and I asked Scurry, I said, hey, my shirt's up there. He said, nah, the band's leaving. I said, put my shirt's up there. And I see him pick it up and walk the fuck backstage. And I'm yelling, what? that's mine! It's signed by Corpse Grinder! I mean, dude, I must be sounding like George Costanza. Did you throw it up on stage? Screaming in the crowd. No, I didn't throw it on stage. Who did? My friend didn't mean to throw it. He was waving it around like into the show. In the Papa Roach. Oh, some beat. goddamn hell. What you in the Papa Roach. You can redeem I'm yourself. Sorry. You no, need I'm to sorry. go to your friend. I'm getting so mad. Dude, Look, he's not, we're not friends anymore. We're not well, friends anymore. You still need to beat his ass. Years this. later, he ended up you on the drugs and the bad path, and I stayed away Fuck from him. it because, you know, I want to be a normal human, but goddamn. My shirt. You're not a normal human if you throw somebody's Corpse Grinder signed Thank t-shirt on, on a fucking stage. It doesn't even belong to Corpse It was Grinder. signed by Corpse Grinder. Fuck him. He signed it. Beat his ass. You have a mission, sir. Goddamn. If any of you out there know what it's like Come to on. lose a Corpse Grinder signed t-shirt, speak up. Because it was taken from me. Well, I just did. By a buffoon. Beat the buffoon's ass. It's your mission now. You have to do this. Fear I'm a bigger I will man. go with you. No, you're not a... Uh, exactly. Please, yeah, please talk about Fear Factory. You're I've a bigger man. Line. I've seen him live. He's, he's, he's a bigger man. Even more you adjustment. know, that was a rumor. That was a rumor people started about that show. We're going to turn you into death metal. That was a rumor people started about that show that Fear Factory was going to play, but it was never a thing. It was never even a thing. Fear Factory wasn't going to... They weren't going to open for fucking Papa Roach. Could you see Fear Factory opening for Papa Roach? At that point in my life. Yeah, that's pretty blasphemous. I, I knew more about Papa Roach than I did about Well, see, that's just it, man. Like, like, it's and, and it's nothing against well, your see, upbringing. Yeah, all, I, but I knew a lot about Fear Factory when Papa Roach came and they had that little flyer. See, you, you, I guess. I was there. I guess, it was Alien Ant Farm. All right, but all right, this comes to another that discussion. Guy. Like, when you're little, some people's parents and some people's weren't were okay with metal and some people weren't. Some people were like, if it was radio friendly like Papa Roach, you could hear it. That was really But weird. if it wasn't, if it was Fear Factory and it was talking, I got no time for goddamn respect. Your parents didn't want you to hear that. They didn't want they they were like, hey, no, I need this kid to have goddamn respect. I didn't know about that, but I know White Pony, Knife Party. Yes. Which in the background. I mean, you know, dude, but like you know, you know where they 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 actually recorded that whole album in a haunted mansion in California. You know what like pisses me out. off about parents doing that shit? That They're album. stifling their yeah. children yeah. from <clears throat> fucking experiencing uh, the opportunities of, of music that they, they, they may never hear of. Dude, if you pass a band up when someone offers you to hear it, what if you never hear it again? Yeah, I would have never known about it Around the Fur. I never known My about favorite album by the Deftones to this day, dude. It's God. honestly Around the Fur. Uh, root, adrenaline. Uh, or adrenaline. Sorry, right. with root and all that. Uh, around the fur, uh, adrenaline, and then it would be actually diamond eyes. I love passenger yeah. and and a bunch of songs off uh, White See, Pony, dude. You like hexagram? But I'm not bullshitting, dude. Diamond eyes, dude. Listen to it. Have you listened to Diamond Eyes by the Dude, I have, dude. I, I'm <laughs> probably the biggest Def Tones fan you'll ever meet. Can you honestly tell me that Diamond Eyes is worse than White Pony? That's ain't worse. No, it's not worse than White Pony. No, no, you have to understand that Listen the Death Tones, it, you genuinely know because it is a band that is in my but top three. But the problem three. is, it is a band that's in your top three, so you're that's biased mean, against them. You're no, biased. I'm not biased against them. I'm biased because. Dude, I'm biased against produce. Negro Goblin no, no, and Pantera, no, 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 dude. No, 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 if you no, tell no, me Pantera no, no. sucks, dude, I'm ready to fight. Fisticuff. Where did this come from? I never, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not threatening you. Deftones. I'm not saying that. Like, Delbert. Yeah. Deftones. Hey, Delbert. We're getting in a fight here. I'm not judging me. <laughs> <laughs> you, you need to pee on the asshole now, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah dude, but I'm saying, like, dude, like, look, I grew up on the Deftones. I, I did, too. Dude, I still wear the White Pony t-shirt, dude. It's got holes in the armpits. I love it because I'm not gonna throw away a shirt. <laughs> True. From one of my favorite records, dude. I love the Deftones. Yeah. Dude. And I I'm a too. person that saw them in 1997 when they toured around Refer, and it sounded 
goddamn awful. I, I saw them Dude. in 04. Yeah, well, I saw them, and they were the worst, one of the worst bands I've ever seen live. But and to this day, I still love them. Yep, me too. Because I know... I, well, they're, they're I, I'm recording aware, dude. artists. People kept telling me, like, like I don't, I'm not a huge Chevelle fan, but when they played last May and I saw them, they sounded really bad. Yeah. And people were like, oh, well, fuck, I'll never watch Chevelle again. And I'm like, oh, that's actually me? I just haven't done it. Uh, Boosh. When I saw Chevelle, I was like, look, people have bad days, dude. Do, do you ever go to work and give your 110? Never. Wait, dude, Chevelle? Because you have bad days, dude. You may wake up depressed. Not what if bad. your wife bits at you tonight? Before? Chevelle was Or your cool. husband fucking they shit sucked. on you. You know, you might have uh, a bad I'll day at work, dude. Bands have the same thing. I cannot stand it when a, when somebody shits on a band for one live performance. What if, album What album do you think Chevelle ended up uh, on? It, 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 it was Clinch. whatever... Clincher. It was whatever album that point number one was on. That was a great album. Through and through. Like, that... that that's when Chevelle was Wonder badass. What's next. Wonder what's Not next. metal, yeah, but I just want to clarify. Ones. That was cool. The, the look, I'll even say, look, I'll even go th- to the extreme to say this. Creed, their first album, as far as a guitarist, one of the best. It was really great. Like, um, I didn't say vocals. That's um, not metal, but um, it's it's got shit. some rock oriented, which can lead into metal. Torn wasn't metal. Torn was metal. It had some parts where it's like. So, yeah. Typo yeah, negative. Yeah, yeah. Gentlemen, typo negative. Hey. You know, people, um, people I know shit on them. You shit on Cradle of Filth or they shit on, like, somebody else? I don't shit on Cradle of Filth. I don't like them, but, like, you know, dude, like, that's the thing. Like, man, I've come to learn in my 30s, late 20s and 30s, like, dude, I grew up thinking that, like, you know, heavier, the heavier, the heavier, the heavier you got. The more brutal the vocals, the faster, the more you went, you know, you just got the pig vocals, you got harder and harder and harder, the better it got. Like, I don't know what, I want to, I almost want to do an episode trying to find where that mentality came from, because where that anger come from? Where that was all I wanted to hear, but it's not true. Maybe life experiences. Perhaps. But I want to find out. I want to find out. Because when it comes down to, um... When it comes down to metal, like man, like I like a lot of stuff. Like, like, like I, I've openly admitted that I'm a big fan of music overall. I love metal. That's my number one. It always will be eighty percent, ninety percent of my repertoire. But I love bands like Weezer. I love Thin Lizzy. I love bands that are good songwriters because I can hear, <laughs> I can hear in them that they're good songwriters. If you talk shit, I may give you a smack. I don't want to give a smack. I'm gonna talk yes. Schmidt. Please don't talk Schmidt. No, not on Don't talk Lizzie. Schmidt. Well, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. but that's no, no. If George Thurgood and the Destroyers is still to this day man's best friend. Dude, one shot, one whiskey, one fucking beer, one to bourbon. To this day, dude, one I, bourbon, one scotch, one beer. Yeah, I'm sorry. You can't, can't, he can't shit on me. Guthrie the Schmidt, he got me. Can can we bring up at least the topic? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Of, of, I about gamma. think, uh, Brutal needs to be a, at least yeah. mentioned in the metal world. You got top three Brutals. Right now, got three. Who are they? Start with three, then go two, and then one. Opinions differ so much, please. Of course they do, but I need well, to know what, what's on your... What, what, what I can define is if I'm listening to something Brutal, it would be these three bands, Dying Fetus... Oh, skinless. Twice seen them live. Fucking dying fetus, man. See, just fuck me up, because that's... Wait, I saw them twice, too. Dying fetus. Yeah. Just give me a death. Skinless so, is number skinless, two. Skinless, dying fetus, and... Um, Cannibal. No, 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 no. Nothing um, that's because of the drugs and the booze. Putridity. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Abominable putridity. So let me, let me run through these. Abominable putridity. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Skinless, dying fetus, and abominable putridity. Metal My homework top three. for the week: abominable putridity. Oh, that's not homework. That's, that, that's just homework. maybe not for you, but it is for me, and it might be for no, him there, and it might for, that, be that's, for that's anybody a, listening. That's a whole pleasure.
I'm giving you the honest truth here. Like, when it comes down to metal, man, like, I, I honestly think it unites people who may be not, like, on the same level, you know, mentally or, or, or even on a friendship level, you know, in, in normal circumstances. Like, I, I think that level, that, 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 that metal really helps level out relationships. It, it's, it's made me some of the best friends I've had in my life. Lee Rude. Gordon, do you hear Angry Gordon? I've known him for 28 years. Who was the first to bring up Gent? Who was the first to bring up Gent? Dude, you know what? I found Gent on my own. On your own? New, did I not, without mentioning them then because of legal reasons, did I not give you the websites to find new right, metal and find things? Like. And that's not an encouragement to download music sourced otherwise anywhere. I always encourage to buy things because I think these bands need support. I just want to listen to it on Spotify or YouTube. Well, I mean, it's good, dude. Here's what I found out. There's a lot of sites that you can find things like torrents or find things like links to download bands. That's not necessarily the case for them. But what they do for me is they allow me to find out the names and genres of bands that are in the typical genre I like that I might have never heard. Dude, Ailstorm, bada boom, completely on accident. Like they they came out like what two thousand eight nine or whatever they formed. I'm sure they formed a few years before they released the record. Is that a gimmick? I have Ailstorm is a gimmick, but regardless, they were incredibly talented. They hit all the right spots for metal for me. They they write catchy songs. They write interesting songs. They put that 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 guy Christopher Bowles, dude. I commented on Facebook and he commented back on my thing. That and it's their fifth or sixth album, so they're they're actively following their followers online. Sometimes how it happens. These are guys that 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 take serious with their career and have fun with it. And when I think it comes to metal, dude, I think a lot of people get into metal and they look at it like, all right, we're in a business, we got to make you know an album to make X amount of money to appease the record company or whatever. I don't know how it works. I could be speaking out my ass. Well, that's but, definitely a drive because you have a contract. I, well, of course. I mean, you want to you want to do something life. with your life that that makes you a living, so you can live comfortably. I understand. But at the same time, like if you're making music to do that, I think that you're not making music for making. Music. Oh my god! Non-judgmental! I'm gonna be judgmental! <laughs>